What's going on guys? Welcome back to Flatline Detonation. I'm Dakota and we are going to be working on some more dots and stuff today. If you guys watched the last video, we made this Super BA Custom TR6060 Transmission Shifter Relocation Dealy Bob. Works great. If you guys want to know how to make it, go watch my other video. But since you guys last saw me, I've accumulated a few parts for you. Everything's going to be going on or in this aluminum LM4 5.3 liter. So let me spread all this stuff out and explain to you what's going on here. Today's video, what I want to do is install all these parts you see behind me. And I actually want to start the engine on the engine stand. Utilizing the Terminator X, I mean, it's all of like two or three wires, plug everything into this thing, and I should be able to just feed it some fuel and start it up right on the engine stand. Going over some of the parts that I got for this build, starting at the bottom side of the engine, I got a C6 base model oil pan. It's one of the shallowest OEM pans you can get. It's even shallower than like some of the Holly pans. I got a windage tray just to match the oil pan, some gaskets and a oil pickup reinforcement. Along with all that, figured might as well do a new oil pump. This is just a OEM Mellings replacement. The drive line portion of this, it's all going to be LS1. So I got an LS1 water pump. I got an LS1 harmonic balancer. So this harmonic balancer will actually be pulled off, replaced with that one. Ah! Good thing I'm not reusing this. chain and gears for this thing. I'm just turning this over and aligning the two marks on the crank gear and then the cam gear so I can pull this off and keep it all within time. I gotta double check to make sure I don't need to have, I believe this puts piston number one at TDC, but I'll just double check that before I pull all this stuff off. Oh man, I'm feeling really dumb right now. <laughs> Been trying to figure out why the cam isn't turning freely in there. Well, when you have the rockers on and everything is still in place on the valve train side, you can't really pull the cam out. So I gotta flip this thing back over, pull the rockers and all that fun stuff out. I gotta do the valve springs anyway, so all that's gotta come off. So yeah, I'm feeling kind of dumb right now. smoother once I got the uh, rockers and all that stuff out. Got everything laid out. I'll be going through all these and using this trunnion bearing kit. As you can see there's all these little bearings in there. Those will get pressed out of each one of these rocker arms and the new ones will get pressed in. That's just a durability long-term thing so you don't have something break. Obviously putting a cam in your valve train is going to be doing a lot more work than it was before. The cam's actually in really good shape. There's no crazy wear on it or anything like that. You can't really see down in there, but the cam bearings look really good. 
I know you're not supposed to look at them, otherwise they're bad, but they look fine, so I'm not gonna worry about messing with it. Um, this is just kind of a sloppy mechanics. Throw it together, throw it in the car, make sure it works, run the car down the road, figure out some stuff, and then it all gets torn apart again anyway. I've got the sloppy stage two cam to go in. If you guys are curious about any of the specs on this thing, there it is. Let's toss this cam in there and keep working on stuff for this engine. <laughs> Definitely leave this cover loose because uh, you gotta put your crank pulley on and then you gotta put the oil pan on. So if this gets tightened down, you'll have some, you'll have some problems. Kind of like how I just forgot to put the oil pump on. Yeah, kind of need that. really hard to see but that thing was a pain to get in there bearings. Time for the trunnion upgrade. guys I got this thing all tossed back together kind of skipped ahead because I didn't think you'd want to see all that boring stuff go back on but what we're gonna do now is take the Holly Terminator X I've got this part spin fuel system set up this is e46 filter with a regulator so it'll have like 45 50 psi this is a stock STI fuel pump so it should be enough to start to start this engine up Went ahead and made a little two by four frame. I don't want to be that guy that starts his engine on an engine stand and the thing tips over and breaks. Let's get to installing this thing and seeing how easy it is. All 
Oh man, guys, we have power. So far, this has been a really dummy proof kit. Like everything is labeled. There's like numerous options. I forgot to ground that. So I'm gonna ground that before we start messing with stuff some more. Uh, but everything is literally labeled. Like this is gonna go into the intake. I just have my sensor plugged into it. Should be fine for startup. Uh, yeah, super dummy proof. I'm really happy with this kit so far. It's yelling at me. We have to do a TPS setup. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna come back. Holy crap, guys. Okay, I should have been filming all this, but it's been a super stressful two days. The last time I left you, I thought I was gonna plug this thing in and it was gonna work. Definitely did not. I had to swap out my TPMS sensor because that was bad. I swapped out the crank sensor because that was bad. And then I had the MAF hooked up when I had the MAF hooked up on there. I believe that was my issue. I'm not 100% sure. It's, it's just been chaos. So all this madness works. I'm gonna put you on the stand here. I'm gonna start this thing up and you're gonna hear loud American V8 sounds. All right guys, here it goes. I'm so pumped. I feel like such a redneck right now. <laughs> Look at this chaos. I got this hodgepodge fuel system running in there. I didn't want to run it any longer than that because there's no coolant system on there and it's kind of freshly put together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drain the oil out of it now because God knows what was like all in there for putting it together. Drain it out, put some more oil and another filter on there. This is honestly a huge milestone for the Z because the engine runs. All I have to do now is throw it in the car, hook everything back up with nicer things, obviously. I, I gotta figure out like a nice fuel pump and a filter and all that stuff for it. But it works, it runs, it makes V8 sounds. I'm super pumped. All right, I'm gonna start this thing one more time for you guys because it's awesome. And I found some issues. I was actually only running on seven cylinders, number seven. The injector must have been like stuck closed from sitting for so long. I also want to show you the like wizard setup because I was really excited when this thing started and I didn't explain anything I did. I actually went ahead, put it on a keyed ignition. So key on. Also got a momentary switch for the starter. So I'm not just using a screwdriver. Let's see if I can walk you through this on the GoPro. It's kind of hard to see, but so we're going to go to the home. You just fired this thing up for the first time gonna go to wizard then you need to set everything up here so multi-point fuel injection we got eight cylinders firing order this is all just set up to run an LS we want to go I'm just gonna do metric we got 5.3 liter uh, we're gonna do target idle of 900 and yeah, we'll do 950 actually and then below 235 duration, this is sloppy stage two cam, 24 tooth. We, uh, they don't have my injectors loaded in here. These are LS6 or LS1. So I'm just gonna click the Holly 24 pound cause these are 28s, should be close enough. Power adder, no, we are NA for the, for the time being. Load it up. All right, that was successful. And then you're gonna wanna do a TPMS. So do that. To the floor, that, to the floor, that, okay. Did that. All right, we are good to go. So I'm gonna key it off, key it back on. You hear the fuel pump priming. I have it all hooked up. There's a green wire in this loom. There's a main power wire and then there's a fuel pump wire. So that's hooked up to my sketchy junk bin set up there. So we're ready to start. I'm gonna go to the monitor screen just so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. 
You can see oil pressure in the lower corner. Um, just a bunch of useful information. I'm not gonna talk through it all. Okay, but I'm gonna hit this button and this thing's gonna start right up. <laughs> And there you have it. I mean, it's that easy. Except I had some problems. Make sure your power and ground is hooked up really, really well because if you don't, uh, it doesn't like it. It needs like full 12 volts. Otherwise, it kind of just freaks out. Um, it was breaking up a little bit there, like you heard. Um, obviously, it's not tuned. I literally just set it up on the on the handheld, and nothing's actually like completely dialed in. But when you think about it, I just started it by hitting a couple buttons on a Game Boy. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Like, really cool system. Definitely worth a thousand bucks for it. Obviously, if you get like a Terminator Max, it's gonna be a little more money. But in my opinion, um, coming from Subaru, where you have to constantly make adjustments, turn the car off, flash it, it, takes like three minutes to make an adjustment. That thing, it's all live. You make adjustments on the fly. It's super cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something. I had a lot of fun doing this. Pretty redneck thing to do start your engine on an engine stand but it helped me diagnose a bunch of issues I would have had throwing the engine in the car and that would have been a pain to mess around with it in the car now all else I have to do throw it in the car figure out some little things here and there and we should be able to drive the Z soon as soon as I pull out of storage thanks for watching guys see you later